Hi, I'm Mark Frazier. Exploring wildlife right in our own backyard is the best way to learn to appreciate them and therefore protect them. You're invited to join me on the exciting wildlife adventures. Welcome to Nature Walks. As an aggressive storm began to blow in, a brilliant red color caught my eye. It turned out to be the amazing sumac. Now this is a plant in nature whose story simply must be told. I knew it would be raining soon, so I ran under the cover of the leaves to have a look. It's getting overcast, so I want to hurry before the rain comes, but I wanted you to appreciate the beautiful bark here on the sumac. This is the staghorn sumac and the bark is actually kind of similar to balsam. If you've ever looked at a balsam tree bark, you'll notice these little blisters. Nothing about the staghorn sumac is boring, not even the bark. You see, as you make your way from the ground up to where the leaves are, slowly the bark goes through a change. Instead of being a hard bark like you'd find on a regular tree, Eventually, it becomes very soft and pliable until you get right about where the leaves are, and then it's actually covered in hairs. Have a look at this super magnification. You can actually see the hairs on the branches. Just incredible. Now, there's about 16 different kinds in North America. This is actually found even on roadsides, which is amazing. Now, sumac have a bad rap, which is undeserved. Varieties of sumac are actually poisonous. It's similar almost to poison ivy in that you can get a rash. I have a simple rule with wild edibles. Only stick with what you know and pay attention to what you're doing. If you peel back the hairy seed clusters, you'll actually find the nutrient-rich seed below. Many species can overwinter on that. The fuzzy berries in the staghorn itself actually provide a home for a bunch of different insects. You can peel them apart and find all kinds of bugs and caterpillars. They'll even overwinter in there. And some birds have learned to take advantage of that. For example, the eastern bluebird. During the colder months, when it hasn't quite migrated yet, and it still needs to find insects, it can actually get in there, get to those little insects inside the staghorn sumac, and find the protein that it needs, even later in the season. On many of the branches, I saw what appeared to be fruit. It's actually something called a gall. That's made by an aphid called the sumac aphid. Some of them had been compromised by a beetle that put their larvae in there, so they have their own predators. I could clearly see why birds can take advantage of the sumac to get through the winter. There's just tons of insects in there. Now these beetle larvae aren't helpless at all. As a matter of fact, they can move around very well. They can toss, turn, and roll to find cover before any birds spot them. But I know these larvae didn't make that gall. So what exactly did? Let's look at the sumac aphid. Now they are absolutely tiny. We have to go in with special magnification. These are smaller than a grain of rice. They actually place their tiny larvae on the leaves that create the gall. Then they go through their life cycle, protected in their little house until they develop wings. And amazingly, they can fly. Another example of the wonders of mother nature, unless of course you're a crab spider, then it's just a flying lunch. These tiny crab spiders are actually ambush predators. Now the sumac is shaking around in the wind and this is distracting this little tiny aphid. Now the crab spider can pounce. The wind doesn't bother him with these spikes on his legs he can hold on. He watches his prey with incredible spider vision. Reminds me of my first rock concert. <clears throat> the crab spider makes his move. The aphid flies off. No worries, he'll find a new male. Now speaking of males, let's get back to that rainy day. There's lots of nutrients for you and I as well. The staghorn sumac makes an incredible tea. I've had many times at home. Okay, we'll do our picking on a sunny day. Now late in the summertime, when the berries are nice and ripe, is the best time to pick them. Often roadside is the easiest way to find sumac. I just go around until I find a spot with lots of sunlight and sooner or later, sure enough, there they are. So I look for really rich berries, a really deep red color. Now that I found a great location, I'm gonna get myself a pitcher. 
Now seeing a turkey vulture flying overhead is probably not a great sign when you're picking wild foods. Nah, I'll be fine. Okay, so I've got my container and a pair of clippers and it's off to harvest. This is a great spot, loaded with berries. Now it really doesn't take long at all to get a bunch of berries from the sumac, but I don't want to take too many from an individual tree so I move around quite a bit. Remember, it's a great thing to have in your area and once you know where there's a good patch, you're going to want to protect it so that you can enjoy the incredible sumac tea year after year. You know, native people would harvest sumac like this thousands of years back. Since you can easily preserve the sumac berries simply by keeping them clean and dry, it's a good idea to get enough for your needs. Because you're out there already and you've got the equipment, you might as well take what you need and this way, later on during the winter, you'll be covered if you need to get any of this nutrient-rich drink. It's a good idea while you're out in the field to inspect your sumac berries. Just try to get any insects or debris off of them as much as possible. Now staghorn isn't the only beneficial sumac, and upon closer observation, I found that these berries were much different than I was seeing in the staghorn. Let's have a closer look. First of all, the berries themselves. I noticed on this bushel that the berries didn't have the hairs that I was seeing normally on the staghorn. You see that? They appear to be dry. There's not a single hair on the entire cluster. These are definitely different. Now let's have a closer look at the staghorn sumac. Big difference. Loaded with hairy clusters like that on each berry, and yet these berries don't have a single fiber on them. Very interesting. Look at them side by side. It's clear that these are two totally different types of sumac. With any wild edibles, you need to really pay attention to the close details. And when you have a known plant and you compare it to an unknown plant, that's the best way to look at the difference. Look at these leaves. They look shinier and they don't appear to be toothed. To really appreciate what I'm talking about, let's compare the two leaves side by side. Now the staghorn sumac is on the right and this other species is on the left. The shiny leaves give it away as the shiny sumac, also known as the winged sumac. Very different from the staghorn. Okay, so we've got what we need and now it's time to get to work making some nutrient rich sumac tea. After a final inspection, it's time to add the water. I give it a really good soaking. I try to kind of bruise each one of the clusters. This will help get the nutrients out. Now the jug selection is very important because otherwise you'll get it all over you when you're trying to shake it up. Now I give it a good shake, not crazy, but just enough to make sure that I bruised each one of the clusters. Now I store it for the night. Have a look at the amazing color of this. Now it's similar to ginger ale. It's between a, a pink and a gold. Now I only use about half the jug of sumac and some folks would do the whole thing and really absorb all the vitamin C, but I tend to put a little bit less and then let it soak longer. So I actually had this for a few hours outside. Then I brought it into the refrigerator and left it overnight. So that looks like a really good mix. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot and see what it tastes like. So wish me luck. Now, obviously I've already strained some. And I'll put the entire thing through like a cheesecloth to get all the little fibrous pieces of matter out of there. And if there's any insects or anything like that, just to make sure that it's a nice clean drink. And I've done that for you so we can have a look at it. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so I brought a little, this has already been filtered away as you can see here. And now look at the color difference on this. This is a really a gold mix in it. It really changes depending on how long you soak it for, but I think this batch is going to be really, really tasty. So we'll give it a shot. This should be fantastic. Ah. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> Highly loaded in vitamin C. A great drink right in your own backyard. See, with Mother Nature, the closer you look, the more you see.
Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Love sumac. Well, we've come full circle on our journey in the moments just before a downpour under the shade of the sumac. Sumac, an amazing tree. The incredible thing about wildlife is the closer you look, the more you find. Thank you so much for joining me on this nature walk. I'm Mark Frazier and I'll see you again very soon.